In chapter 3, the first thing we see that God is walking in the garden, right? And he's asking Adam, where are you? Right? There, he could be talk, asking Adam where he is, right, in a kind of uh, um, anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic sense. But we know God doesn't walk, right? God has no body. That God is all-knowing. There's another way that we can understand this, where are you, right? Where are you with regard to this covenant? And this seems to be really the context. Because Adam's response to this, where are you, is he said, well, I saw you coming and I hid myself because I was naked, right? There is this recognition something has changed in this relationship with God. Adam has sensed that he has broken this relationship with God. He saw this first idea when he looked at this other person who was created for him, that when he looked at her, right, they were naked and unashamed. When he looks at her and her body, he sees the fullness of the expression of who she is, right? And all of a sudden, after this act of rebellion, that person is gone. And now he recognizes that there is a diminishment of the way that we, they see one another. And this is why they hide themselves from one another, because they recognize that now I am being reduced right, to my sexual value, because that's what I'm doing to the other. That's what my inclination is. We can no longer see the other with the eyes of purity. And so this relationship with God has been ruptured. You see, when we were first created, let's go back to this image of the, or the symbol for the Trinity. Adam and Eve, now they both have big heads. Adam and Eve had this relationship with God. And they were in communion with God. And that meant that they had what we would call this interior harmony. Right? This interior harmony comes from original grace. Right? Adam and Eve are operating the way that they were supposed to. When Adam looks at Eve, he has full mastery over himself. He doesn't reduce her to her sexual value, which is a good, her va a man and a woman's sexual value is a good, but we are much more than our sexual value. We can't separate ourselves from our sexual value, but to be reduced to that is to diminish us. And in doing that, we diminish ourselves as well. We saw that this wasn't a problem. There was this interior harmony but the shame they felt was because this interpersonal harmony is now ruptured, right? And with the rest of creation, we can see what happens to that as well. We saw that in the first, there was this rupture of the relationship with God. When God was asking Adam where he was. After Adam explains what has happened, right? After we go through what has happened, we see the relationship between the serpent and humanity. What is going to define that? In verse 16, we see an indication, a further indication of the loss of interior harmony. We see the loss of interior harmony with Adam and Eve in this shame, but we see also with a woman whose pains during childbirth are going to be, bro are going to be multiplied, right? And if we lose this interior harmony, what happens? Well, we lose this interpersonal harmony as well, disrupted, especially with the fact that the woman and the man, the man is going to rule over the woman and her desire is going to be for him. St. John Paul II understands this text to represent the fact that the man is now going to abuse his authority, his, the gifts that he has been given, to take advantage of this power and the, to, take, to have his will over his wife. 
and her response is going to be trying to obtain that same power. And we also see with the rest of creation, right, Adam and Eve, Adam who was supposed to guard and till the gar garden, now the garden, uh, the, now the creation, now the earth gives back, instead of providing for them, it gives back thistles, right? He, it is now no longer a tending and now is a, through the sweat of his brow, it's this disharmony. These original harmonies have been completely lost, completely disrupted. Now, this is because we are east of Eden. We are east of Eden, and this is the image that's given. We're sent out of the garden, right? We're sent out of the garden. Things are not the way they're supposed to be, right? We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto, right? We are now in a state, a situation that God had not created for us. And this is critically important because it describes our experiences. Right? G.K. Chesterton, the great uh, convert from the early 20th century, put it this way. He said that of all the Christian doc dogmas, original sin, the fall, right, is the one that's most easily proved by our experiences. Right? It's the one most easily proved by our experiences because we know that we are not, that we cannot make ourselves do oftentimes what we know we want to than we, what we know we should. This is going to be a critical importance, right? This goes, remember we talked about the distinction or the difference between joy and pleasure. Understanding the difference between joy and pleasure becomes a challenge, and it, but it becomes a very important task because we're east of Eden, because of the fall. We'll talk more about this when we talk a little bit more about the human person. 